In 1995, a middle-aged man covered in lemon juice was arrested for robbing two banks. Oh, the 90s. A simpler, more magical time. You see, the man, MacArthur Wheeler, had recently learned about some chemical properties of lemon juice that, when used, could create invisible ink. Well, using some simple logic and common sense, he deduced that he would be able to rub the lemon juice all over his face, thus making himself invisible to the security cameras. Well, obviously this was a dumb fucking idea and didn't work at all, but more shockingly, he was surprised when he learned how little he knew about invisible ink and lemon juice. And it was this incident that prompted David Dunning and Justin Kruger in 1999 to investigate this phenomena, now referred to as the Dunning-Kruger effect. Essentially, what they found out was that whenever someone lacks an adequate knowledge about a subject, not only do they know very little about it, but they also know very little about the depth and the breadth of the subject. Basically, they didn't know how much there was to know. Although Dunning and Kruger were the first to create an empirical definition for this phenomena, it's been referenced all throughout history by historical figures such as Confucius, Charles Darwin, and Bertrand Russell. So what is it that these great men have realized, and why is it important to you, random viewer? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, the Dunning-Kruger effect can and will affect each and every single one of us throughout our lives. So it's important for us to be able to recognize it happening. That way we can stop and even prevent it from happening in the first place. So in order to do this, first we're going to have to learn about the topic a little bit. And once we learn about it and we have some context, then we can look at some strategies to prevent it or stop it from happening. When looking at the causes and the factors that influence the Dunning-Kruger effect, it's important that we know that it can happen to anybody for any discipline. Anywhere from a novice tennis player overestimating their ability to a flat earther who doesn't understand complex mathematics and therefore thinks that people believing in gravity is stupid. Notice how I said that they are a novice or they don't understand the more complex matters of mathematics. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's not based off of zero knowledge because when you have zero knowledge of a subject, then you don't have any confidence because you know you don't know anything. But once you learn a little bit, you're filled with an overconfidence because you're blind to what else you don't know. So the key factor in this is that it is limited knowledge that drives the Dunning-Kruger effect. And it affects our way to perceive a subject or the world around it because we have no context to reference it to. David Dunning actually stated that the tools we need to create logic and to critically think are also the same tools we use to judge whether that thinking or that reasoning is apt. So basically, it's a two-fold self-feeding system, where if you don't know something, you're going to make faulty assumptions, but also you don't know enough to know that those assumptions are faulty. But what do you do if you see the Dunning-Kruger effect in action? What if you see it happening in someone else? Well, the very first thing you need to do is you need to self-reflect, to make sure that the Dunning-Kruger effect isn't affecting you and that you don't think you know too much about the subject because it works both ways. It's not a smart or stupid thing, it's an ignorant thing and anybody can be ignorant, including yourself. And that's what you need to realize before you try to diagnose someone else with the Dunning-Kruger effect. So the very first step in stopping this is self-reflection. Another method you could use is you could ask close peers or people who are around you for their personal honest opinion. Now this may be hard at first, getting them to tell you honestly what they think about you and how you act, but once you can crack them open and have them tell you that, then that's outside information you can use to shape and mold your own perception. Another thing that you can do is that if you feel that you're very confident and that you know a lot about a subject matter, try researching more and more about it. Research the history of how it began or what influences it. And the more context you get, you might realize that you don't actually know as much as you thought about the subject. And the beautiful thing about this effect is that you can never know how much you don't know. So the only option left is to learn unlimitedly and assume that there's always factors that you 
cannot see. So when looking back to the Dunning-Kruger effect, we see that it's almost unavoidable, but with enough introspective thought and more research than just the bare minimum on topics that we can manage it and we can let it not make us assholes. If you want to see some examples of when the Dunning-Kruger effect does make you an example, stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll show some comments from my last video. They're top notch. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment if your brain has ever Krugered itself. This has been 15 Sec Nut, and I hope you have a good day. Alright guys, thanks for sticking around. Let's take a look at a couple of... Thanks guys for sticking around. Let's take a look now at some of these comments that these flat earthers have left me. And this is a prime example of the Dunning-Kruger effect. The first comment we're going to be looking at is a personal favorite. It was written by Bob Smith, and it says, Fuck you, dog cunt. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to calling, of, calling all of us flat earther retards? When you made a big fool of yourself, we flat earther do real research and break from the matrix, and we see the truth. You fuck with us, we will destroy you and your videos. I don't accept your pathetic Apology, duck, you duck, NASA, cock swallow, vim. As you can see, this guy probably doesn't know a lot about really anything, and so when confronted with that lack of knowledge, he bursts out violently. This next comment is by Victor Sani. Now, this guy freaked out when he saw my Flat Earth video. He would not stop commenting. He probably left the most amount of comments on the entire video, and he actually found my Facebook and left some comments, which me and my sane friends all had a nice chuckle. So, Victor, if you're watching, I want you to go fuck yourself, alright? Because you're stupid and you don't know it. But you know what? I don't blame you because you just got Krugered. But the comment is, The truth should be your main concern, not fishing for fame while glorifying pseudoscientific satanic priests and their masonic occult practices. That's what NASA is, a satanic church. Masons have managed to fool countless generations for 500 years, zero evidence for this by the way, um, into a false doctrine, what? You put fucking exclamation marks in the middle of a sentence. Victor, what the fuck is wrong with you dude? Into a false doctrine of what we are in order to create a slave system. This deception is ingrained into our society in order to divide us. Use your brain and research Flat Earth. This many people are so passionate and willing to give you negative feedback, you should realize it's probably because we've done our research. Wrong.